In this short video, I'm going to give you uh, some instructions on how to use the Wiley transliteration system for transliterating Tibetan. This is what you'll use to type Tibetan on your computer and what you would use to um, look things up in Tibetan in the library, for example, or in other digital databases. You have access to this handout. This is the first, uh, the top of the handout. Um, and on the next slide you'll see what comes below that has some examples. And this shows you the correspondences, uh, the 30 consonants and four vowel signs that you use when you're typing or writing Tibetan in Wiley. So a transliteration scheme, remember, is not about pronunciation. It only expresses the Tibetan spelling, as it says here. So this is a way to accurately represent using Latin letters, English letters, the spelling of a Tibetan word, not the pronunciation. So you can see here that um, each letter has a corresponding um, English letter. Each Tibetan letter corresponds to a certain English letter. And you'll just have to learn these. Notice that the achung, the small a, is represented with an apostrophe and I'll show you an example of that on the next screen. And you'll just have to learn how each of these letters are represented in um, Wiley. So the H series here, these are the aspirated letters, that's why there's an H there. You wouldn't say this one as TH, as TH in English, because of course this is not about pronunciation, it's only about Tibetan spelling. You may find this tricky and slow going at the beginning, but I promise it'll become second nature in no time. It's really quite easy to get used to. You can see some examples here. Boo, just you write um, the B and then the, the consonant and the vowel under it, so these examples are easy. When you have a stacked word like this one, you just start at the top. So here's the ra, kya, ga, ya, and then the vowel and the um, suffix. So you start at the top of a letter, you go down like this, and then you do the suffix, then you go over in Wiley. So if there's no vowel sign, take note that you have to write the letter a right here. So in this word, you have to write la. Um, similarly, in this stacked word, there's no vowel marker, there's just an implied a ah sound, so you do write the a. Ah. And take note here that a um, ah is transliterated with an apostrophe, and so when you have something like this that has two vowels, pa and o, oh, you do write them both, and you use um, the apostrophe to represent the small a. Ah. Um, so that's about it. You just have to practice and get used to it. A um, couple things to notice is that um, something like this, um, you have to write a period in Wiley to indicate that um, this is not a stacked word. So if you were to write um, without the period, you would get this. That's where the ya is below the ga. But when you want to uh, make sure that the ga shows up as a prefix, you have to put, you use this period. And then there's some other more complicated ways to represent Sanskrit words that um, we'll learn as we go along if we encounter those. So we can do a little practice here. Gel. Day. You'll have to put your correspondence, your Wiley correspondence sheet in front of you for a while until you learn these. But before long, it will be second nature. Uh, sorry, that's not drin. That's da. I'm looking at this letter. Dun. Nang. That's this one. Nangwa. Yi. It's this letter, and then the next the next um, for, uh, phrase. You start with an apostrophe. Jik, den, 
sell war ma chena. That was the second phrase. Now the third one. Again, we have jik, so apostrophe. Then sum bo ta apostrophe uh, at the end. That's this this word. Dak ni. And then ma rik. Moon ba ni do apostrophe pure. So this, if you're typing Tibetan, for those of you who have not yet um, started typing Tibetan on your computers, most um, typing, most keyboards for Tibetan will use Wiley. So this is what you'll type, and this is what you'll get. So practice that starting this week and you'll be able to type Tibetan in your computer.